As we continue the assembly process, we now would have to mount the heavy-duty steel bar to the tables. Then we would have to mount the rip saw scale to the tables and the final result should look like this. The rip fence should glide smoothly over the tables. What you see here, there are two bolts with nuts on it. You take off the first nut and please make sure that you don't lose these nuts because you will need them later on. You do the same thing with the second here. And now let's come to our steel bar. Here you see two transport brackets. You can take them off and put them aside. You won't need them any longer. And here you see two more bolts with nuts and washers. Take off one of these nuts and only one washer. The same on the second. I insert that here and here there are pre-drilled holes here. Okay, and now you use that nut and put it on here and tighten it up. Second nut here, that only goes on with finger tightness because you have to level that thing up relative to the table and that's what I'm going to show you now. Before you do that, you apply these washers underneath here and the nut, the same here. And now the best method to check the height relative to the table is if you use your aluminum extrusion. So what I do is I measure down from the table to the bar. Okay. And this should be the same amount here. So we are slightly off a little bit. This has to come up and that's what I do with these nuts here. Well, let's check that one more time. Well, that's fantastic. Good, now you finally turn these nuts till they touch the surface of the table and tighten them from behind. You do the same with this one. Always make sure that, that you only touch the surface, otherwise you would bend the bar. Now you tighten it from behind. And that's it. What you do now is, for the final check, you move on that cast iron rip saw fence together with your bar and now just check this position here the aluminium extrusion should not touch the table if it does just readjust the height of the bar okay now it's time to mount the rib scale onto the table and there is a couple of nuts that you have to unlock first. That's what I do here for you. Don't take them off all the way, just unlock them so that the nut will raise up. Same you do here. Same with this one here. There's another one over there. And there is another one over there. And now, you see how easy that goes? You just slide that in. Make sure that you don't touch the sliding table. 
The fine adjustment of that scale will be done afterwards after the saw blade has been installed. And with a 10 mm wrench, we, we just fix it. That's what. Uh, that's all you do. Okay, then now it's time for the most important chapter in the setup procedure of your Hammer K3 table saw. It is how do you install your saw blades. Now, before I show you that, uh, there is a number of different saw blades that are available. For instance, here I have a metric 315 millimeter saw blade, which is 12 inches. This saw blade can give you a clear 4 inch cut and that's phenomenal. Now, however, if you uh, use this machine with a scoring unit, you would have to take, instead of the 12 inch blade, a 10 inch blade, that's what you see here, and then you can also use the scorer. And this scorer is a metric 80 millimeter, which is about 3 one eighth of an inch. Now, let's see how these blades can be installed. I slide that sliding table now to the very right position. And uh, now I raise the saw aggregate to its full height. can see here and uh, change now the hand wheels and turn the bevel to 90. And now well, let's see what's inside the machine. Inside the machine you see there is an airbag. Now the guys in Austria they have put that airbag into the machine to make sure that everything is held securely in place and that the machine as it goes over the big lake arrives in best condition at your place. So we don't need that airbag any longer. That's why I slice it and therefore I need my Stanley knife. So then, before you install the blade, you have to first take off the flange. So I, I open that bolt. That's an easy thing to do. Now that's your 10 inch blade that goes onto the arbor. And the flange. on the lock bolt, back on the arbor. That's all you do. Next thing I'd like to show you, the scoring unit. Now this is a very special scoring blade. This blade comes with two, it's two blades, and there are shims in between. Now these shims that you see here, they are necessary to adjust, to adjust the width of your scoring blade so that it fits with the curve of your main blade. That's what I'm going to show you here. Now let's see how this goes onto the arbor. That's also very easy. Always make sure uh, that the scoring blade is mounted into, into the correct position. It has to spin the opposite direction of your main blade. And uh, the real advantage of a scoring unit is it will give you a perfect cut if you work with laminates or with veneered panels. Finally, the riving knife that slides in here. And is locked in place easily. As I mentioned before, the scoring unit needs three adjustments. The first adjustment is done 
with these shims that go in between of the two halves of the scoring blade. It has to be adjusted precisely so that it matches with the curve of your main blade. Secondly, you have to adjust or to set the height of your scorer. Therefore, you use that socket wrench, you unlock it here, and with this screw, you now set the height, or in other words, the cutting depth. For the horizontal setting, you use another screw over here, and as you can see, you can now set your scorer precisely so, th so that it, it will go in line with your main saw blade. This is a very, very accurate adjustment and uh, this guarantees a trouble-free, chip-free cut with laminates. A very special feature on your Hammer K3 table saw is the dado. This machine comes with a dado capability and here you see an original European dado head. This head consists of two halves, so I take them apart and you see in between there are shims, a number of shims where you can adjust the head from a minimum of 8 millimeters up to a maximum of 19.5 millimeters, which is approximately three quarters of an inch. Now, for that purpose, we have removed the riving knife. We also have removed the original throat plate. We will replace that into a specially designed throat plate for dado cuts. We now will also remove the original saw flange. And you see, this gives you the room necessary for the dado head. Now, this is an easy job. All you do is you just put the dado head on. It's the same thing like on the saw blade. And uh, now, there is a special flange specially designed for the dado head and uh, you use the same bolt that you have used with your saw blade. That's what you do. Now let's see how you work with that specially designed throat blade. Therefore, I lower the dado so that it goes underneath the table and you see now the throat plate will be mounted in the table here. You use the same Allen screws that you have used with your original throat plate. Now you switch your machine on and uh, you wind the dado up till it goes through the throat plate. And this will then give you an absolutely accurate, precise, vibration-free cut. Now, as you can see, we have changed the saw blade from a 10 inch into a 12 inch blade. And this, and that's phenomenal. It gives you a clear four inch cut. The next thing is important for your own safety, and that's the saw guard. You see, this is a very special one. It is transparent. It gives you best access to the rotating blade. You should always use it for a safe operation. You see, it's very easy to attach. All you do is attach it on your riving knife and then you turn the knob and that's it. Okay, finally you just have to close this service door. And now that's important for you, you see that knob. If this knob is in the lower position, you won't be able to start your, your saw because it is disconnected from the main power supply. So always make sure that the knob goes into the upper position. Now the service door is locked, but now you can start your saw at the main on button. Here you see another important thing. It's the dust extraction port. And this is a real big one. It's a five inch port. And uh, there is another one on top of your saw guard. That's a two inch port. So if you use two flexible hoses, that will keep your machine clean. It will also keep your workshop clean. And one more thing, it adds to your health because the air that you breathe will be free of dust. As you have seen, this Austrian built sliding table saw is well built, it is extremely user friendly and it is easy to set up. If you are on the market for a new table saw, definitely give the Hammer K3 a closer look. In the meantime, thanks for watching and enjoy your woodworking.